what are the ins and outs of unlocking this iPhone? Surely it's just one phone. I'm, there's devil's advocate for you. Well, the FBI started off in this case saying they wanted to unlock just one phone that was a phone that belonged to the government anyway and was used by a dead terrorist and as he was dead he had no privacy rights. But once we started to dig into it, it turned out that there had been dozens to hundreds of similar cases where the FBI wanted Apple and others to create tools to get at stuff and they weren't willing. And clearly this was the photogenic case that the FBI thought they could use to battle down the door. Now, it's an enormous expansion of government surveillance powers because traditionally in America, uh, if the police got a warrant, that gave them the right to look, but it didn't give them the right to compel uh, the suspects, neighbors, or other people to help them. And um, in particular, if you take the rights to order a company to provide a weakened version of its software, there is a big problem about who else will want that weakened version of, of the software, that golden key, and what they're going to do with it. What is this golden key? How would that work? If you've locked something, you've locked it, haven't you? Well, on an iPhone or an Android phone or any other electronic device, the lock that a user can deploy to encrypt his data or her data using a password is largely implemented in software on the device and the software can be updated, and it typically is once a month or so, to have um, patches uh, against whatever security vulnerabilities have been discovered. So if you can somehow subvert or coerce the update process, you can turn the update into a golden key. And this, for law enforcement, must be very thrilling, but for everybody else it's disastrous. Because if people start worrying that software update might give the government or a foreign government access to their stuff, they'll turn it off. And the consequences of that for internet security could be really, really serious. So I'm thinking of a real world non-digital example of this. Is this like you've gone and bought a safe with very strong metal walls and then the company who sold you the safe can turn those walls into jelly? Well, yeah, if the company has got a, a secret 12-digit engineering access code for use by its own technicians only, you know, when they attend a customer who is, say, for a bank whose, whose branch manager has died and didn't write down the combination, and the safe manufacturer's technician can then enter this 12-digit magic code and unlock the bank vault, well, that's very convenient if you're a safe manufacturer. But then if the FBI says, we want you to give us this safe magic code because there's one of these safes in the Chinese embassy, and you do so, right? And then that 12-digit code gets out because, you know, Mr. Snowden puts it in his latest batch of revelations, and then the Chinese and the Mafia all have this magic 12-digit code, then you're absolutely hosed. And there's an example of that from Juniper routers. Uh, Juniper make routers, you know, the telephone switches for the internet, and some years ago, it seems, the NSA got a backdoor in one of these routers, presumably because they got one of their people to get a job at Juniper, or they subverted somebody who was already there. And we learned from the Snowden uh, documents that this backdoor existed. And what happened then was that the Russians and Chinese and others went looking for it and found it. And now, um, Juniper routers, ha half of whose outputs um, are sold in the USA are being used by bad guys overseas to attack America far more than they are used by the American intelligence agencies to attack targets in China. And this is blowback. This is what happens when you start um, abusing infrastructure and other trustworthy facilities for your own intelligence purposes. It can come back and bite you. And that's one of the reasons why former senior um, American intelligence officials um, Head and Roberts and so on, are now against um, encryption backdoors. A number of agencies have dreamed about and sometimes implemented no-bus capabilities, nobody but us. And there is a very long history of these nobody but us capabilities um, suddenly become ca becoming capabilities that many nations had. Another example is the atomic bomb. When the Americans used it in 1945, they reckoned it might be decades before the Soviets figured out how to build one. But of course, within three years, the Soviets had it too, and we had the nuclear standoff of the Cold War. Here in the UK, though, that's not going to affect us, though, is it? I mean, you know, this is an iPhone in America, and it's American laws we're talking about. The FBI case is really, really critical for Britain because of the investigatory powers bill that's now going through Parliament. 
Now, the Investigatory Powers Bill gives the Home Secretary the power to order communication service providers to help law enforcement with warrants. Now, in the old days, that just meant that British Telecom had to let in the chap from GCHQ with his crocodile clips to, you know, attach a tape recorder to your phone line. But nowadays, that most communication is being handled by Facebook, Google, Yahoo, Twitter, and so on, it's very, very different. And the bill has the facility for the Home Secretary to give a secret um, technical capability notice to a services company saying that they must make available a certain wiretap or surveillance capability. Now, because foreign firms objected, they're putting a clause in, they put a clause in the draft bill which says that there's a defence um, if it's technically impractical to provide the facility, you don't have to do it, and also if it's against the law in the company's country of origin, you don't have to do it. But now, if the FBI succeed in compelling Apple to provide a golden key for Apple products in the US courts, and Apple then make that golden key and use it only once, then Theresa May can put a secret um, order on Apple in the UK saying, we would really rather like to have one of these golden keys too, please. Kindly deliver it to GCHQ within 30 days or go to jail, and you may not tell anybody that you've given us this golden key. And what's going to happen then is that the French will do the same. Do Apple give a key to the French? Well, perhaps, because the French are a civilized country and a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council and so on. And then the Italians will want one too. And now, hang on a minute, Senior Berlusconi was in cahoots with the Mafia for many years and abused state facilities to do the Mafia's bidding. Do you really want to give it to the Italians? Well, perhaps, given European structures, you have to. And if you give it to the Italians, then the Greeks want one, and then the Egyptians want one, and then the Saudis want one. And pretty soon, just about everybody except the government of North Korea has got a golden key to your iPhone. We'd like to thank Audible.com for sponsoring this episode of Computer File. They've got over 180,000 titles to choose from, so if you like books, go over to audible.com slash computerfile and there's a chance to sign up for free. Today I'd like to recommend I Was, which is Steve Wozniak's biography. Many of you all know he is, if you like, the computer file half of the pair that started Apple. Most people have heard of Steve Jobs. I'm sure you guys as computer files will know who Steve Wozniak is, so check out I Was. Sign up for your free trial at audible.com slash computerfile. Thanks once again to them for sponsoring this video. I have been speaking to people in the big service companies and an example of the thing that they, they suffer and that really bothers them this is this. And then it will read Suppose off you're Google. and run our shell code. So we should get a shell.